All right, guys. So today we're doing the PHH uh, hose for the FZJ80 series, also known as the Land Cruiser, also known as the Badass. So first thing first um, that I like to do is. I haven't done this one before, but for my research, it's easier to do if you take off the tire. So let me show you what that looks like. Uh, not taking off the tire, but the actual hose. So the hose is this one right here. It's on your uh, heater. Uh, so this is the uh, coolant will run through here when you turn on that back heater, right? So. If you follow that hose down right where that clamp is, there's a metal. I'm not sure if you can really see it really well in here. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Yeah, it's not great looking to see it right here. But there's a metal hose right there. And it's this one. So. That's the top of the hose that you're seeing right there. And it goes down and it's pretty shittily engineered because it flows into a little piece of rubber that's held on by that little clip right there. And then that part goes into the engine. So it's a pretty well known thing that fails. And I'm not sure if you guys can see that or not. Yeah, you can. So that hose right there with the brown marks on it that's the bottom of it and that's where it feeds into the engine so a couple things i'm going to use to help me with this besides taking off the tire is uh, some pliers i am going to try to use some lineman pliers i might use regular pliers if these are too long but i think these will work pretty well and a nice sharp box cutter, you could use a knife. Um, if this isn't sharp enough, I will take out a new blade and use it. I'm hoping this one is sharp enough though. Uh, so my thoughts is I'm going to pull the hose off and then I'm going to cut the bottom hose that's attached to the engine with this and hopefully that helps me uh, get it off a little easier. Um, this is supposedly a really, really hard job to do. Uh, it doesn't look that hard to me, but maybe it is. Uh, the other thing that people sometimes do so they don't break it is this is your transmission line uh, to check. Uh, so it's actually your dipstick. Your dipstick is right there, the little red cap. So some people move that because if you can see, that is right in... Uh, kind of the way so I'm gonna try to work around it but yeah if it becomes an issue I will have to remove it but I'm big on uh, trying to move less the better with a lot of this kind of stuff um, and we'll see where that goes so let's see we want to put you. Maybe if I put you over here. How's that? Uh, well, first thing first, I got to get this top off. I should have done this top before I took the tire off now that I think about it. But oh well, you live and learn, right? So, it sets you up right there. And I'm gonna get a story real quick from the back.
also if this job gets a little too messy, I probably will take this jacket off and my nice t-shirt. Okay. Now I'm hoping I don't actually have to unscrew this. That would have probably made it even more easier, uh, which I can if I want to go grab a screwdriver real quick. But instead, I'm just going to try to clamp this sucker and remove it. These Plyman liar, uh, lineman pliers, honestly, I feel like they're so much better than regular pliers. Now this is going to easily pull right off for me because, oh shit, I've pulled it off before. As you can see, it did leak a little bit of radiator fluid. Now usually there's a bolt in this too. I'm not sure the size of the bolt. Mine doesn't have a bolt, of course. Oh, there is another bolt in there though. There is one more bolt that's supposed to be down here on the side. Let me move that out of the way. Okay, yeah, this is going to work. So let's see if we can reach back here, follow the pipe. Other bolt is on there or not. No, that's not it. I'm thinking that's not it. Alright, that does feel like there's something there. Hmm. my gloves open. I'm not entirely sure that bolt size, but I'm hoping maybe a 10 or a 12. Yeah, let's go with a 12. Let's go with a 10. And I'm not sure which way would be the easiest to get to it, to be honest. It's kind of tucked.
right back there. Let's see if we can get to it. I'm not really sure. Try to go from underneath. Underneath is not going to work, boys. All right, so I'm back. I finally got that bolt off, and I want to show you what that sucker looks like. And that is the one. So it's a 12 millimeter. It was literally such a pain in the butt to get off. I ended up having to use this right here. And I had to go through underneath with my finger on this to actually feel where the bolt was. One handed, put it on. And then even then, I had to hold it in place with one finger and my other two fingers push. Hold one finger, push. Uh, it literally took me probably a good 30 minutes to get that stupid little 10 millimeter bolt off. So I don't know. If any of you know a better way to get that off, and I God, don't want to put that back on, but we'll see. Uh, comment that below. Okay, so we got the bolt off. Uh, the pipe is nice and loose now. So let's look at it. Again... Your pipe might look a little better than mine. Mine's a little chipped. Looks like a little rusty inside. See how nicely it moves now? Another thing I did do is I moved the dipstick. So, boom, I took the dipstick out. It has two bolts. One is a 10 that is right there. And the other one's a 12 at the top. And that's what these two are. Boom. There is the 12 that's at the top and the little 10 that's at the bottom. And then, 
All right. Uh, sorry about the angle. It's um, not going to really be able to show you as I'm cutting it, but blade this so I can see, and we're cutting. And, all right, we're in there. It's starting to leak a little radiator fluid. Let's see if I can grip this sucker and basically rip it out. Looks like we need to cut a little bit more. Be careful, that's what happens when you cut it. All right, uh, I wish I'd known that, but it keeps leaking radiator fluid once you uh, rip it open. So there's the old one. I cut it open. I still got a little bit uh, to get off there, but I don't want to leak radiator fluid everywhere, and I want to kind of see how this pin mechanism works. As you can see, it's a uh, pin. This doesn't seem too great to me. I don't know how to get this fucker off. I mean, it doesn't really matter now, but it's going to matter when I put that new one on. Hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, I have no idea how to get that off. Look at this sucker. I might just put a little grease on that or something. Let's see if I can cut the rest of this off.
And all I use just now to plug it up is actually my other glove. All right, putting this under here, just in case.
God. All I'm trying to do now is cut that last little piece. So I'll be right back. And got the final piece out. So what I didn't realize is that there was another clip on there. And I couldn't understand why this piece of rubber wasn't coming. So, now you guys know from my mistake that there is another clip on there. Which I am going to have to wash these shorts that I'm in. I should not have done this in these shorts. Kind of sucks. All right. Whew. Now let's see how easy it is to get this new one on. Also helps to actually have a good pair of pliers, which I don't. That would certainly help in this situation. Oh, fudge. That is where a good pair of pliers come in. Ah, son of a gun. And I'm really hoping I can get it on there with that lock. Because I really don't want to mess with that. God, that hurt. All right. Now it's time for the fun part. Try to get this back on. I am going to smart remove that clamp so it's a little easier to get to. So it's on like that.
There we go. So I just slipped it about 80% of the way on. I'm going to try to get the rest of it and we'll be right back. All right, guys. So the by not bypass, but the PHH is done. Final product off is this. So some hacks or some uh, easier ways to do this that I found out after my first time. One, for sure, take the wheel off. Two, for sure, move that um, transmission line. Um, so all you do is unbolt again. There's a 12 up there and then a 10 millimeter right there for that bracket. Um, and that is moving it. By doing that, you're going to be able to kind of put your hand on it and it actually moves, right? Uh, the other thing that really helped me is using a box cutter to cut this and then it just shimmies on off. Uh, the other big thing for me was um, I wish I would have known ahead of time that there was another clamp on the end of this. So it's not just that clamp, there's going to be an also uh, just like a regular clamp like one of those, but it's on the end of this leading into the engine. Uh, I did not know that. If I knew that ahead of time, I probably would not have just cut it right here. I would have um, probably cut it a little closer. And honestly, on mine, the clamp was on the opposite side. So this is how it's going to sit in the engine, just like so, right? Boom. And my clamp was all the way over here, like right back there. So I had to shimmy my hand and keep sliding it forever, and it took forever. Uh, the other thing is, right here and there, there's supposed to be bolts. Mine didn't have a bolt there, but it did have a, a nice 12 millimeter here. That was a pain. That took me about 40 minutes to get off. Um, crazy, I know, but it took that long just because it's such an old bolt. And this looks original to me. So I don't think this has been changed. And this is a 97. So that's what, 20... Three, 25 years old. So yeah, maybe that's why my bolt was so hard to get off because it's 25 years old. And as you can see the top of that. Uh, another big thing I did not expect so much is I expected a little radiator fluid to come out from there, but I didn't expect as much as did and it got all over. Luckily, I did have some extra radiator fluid from the last, uh, about two weeks ago. We did the radiator, and I had the radiator flushed. I didn't do that. I had a shop do it. But luckily, I still had um, a gallon of pure radiator fluid, so it's not the 50-50. And I still had, boom, it's that one right there. And I still had some distilled water. Boom. So that's what I've used, the O'Reilly Universal Anti-Freeze and Coolant. And what I did boom, is this. Oh, yeah, I got to add some more. So this was back up to a good level, which as you can see, I need to add some more already. But I uh, added quite a bit and I started it. And by doing that, what it's going to do is it's going to flow through the pipes, through the system, and back to where it needs to go, right? Because all your radiator fluid isn't right in here, right? There's a lot through the lines and some even in the engine block over on that side. And then of course you have some in here too, right? In your overflow. Uh, but basically why I'm getting to that is I started the engine. And why did I do that? I wanted to make sure before I put the wheel back on and everything else that there was no more uh, that there's no leaking in there, right? I wanted to make sure that that was on there good enough. And as you can see, that's the clamp. Because that was really a pain to get that clamp in a good spot to where if I had to, I could get it back off, slash getting the rubber hose on there tight. Um, all I did is use a pair of pliers like that, and honestly, you just keep jimming it. 
So what I like to do with something like that is I latch on like that and then I try to go this way, that way, so not just straight. So this way when you're doing this, kind of a rocking motion, it's going to tighten the hose onto the lever. Uh, lever being the little kind of nipple that comes out of the uh, engine block. So, yep, that's all I got. Last little look at the 80. Uh, I'm changing it here where I live on the water in my RV. Uh, again, those are some side things that I did. This could have been a lot faster if probably I would have watched uh, maybe some videos on this. Didn't even watch any videos. Uh, first time doing it. Did it on a whim today after work. And uh, again, take your wheel off. Two, have a box cutter to cut that thing off. Three, have a nice little small wrench like this, number 12, to get that back bolt off. Um, I still got to put mine back on. Uh, yeah, it's going to be another day thing. We'll see. Um, and that's all I got. If you guys have any questions, put them below. If you have an easier way to do this, let me know. If you've done this before, thumbs up to you because while it wasn't super hard, it definitely was very much a pain in my butt. All right. Take it easy, guys.